All right, let's talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers offense. People are coming for Matt Canada's head, right? Uh, people are wondering if he should be fired. We will talk about that in this video and just why things aren't working in general. I have to be honest, this was usually, you know, I, I, the way I do these videos, to peel back the curtain a little bit, I usually watch the game, and if there's like a specifically notable play, then I'll just already screen record it, but usually I'll, I'll, I won't screen record anything until I've seen the game, and then I'll go back and pick the select, select plays that I want to show to make my points about how I viewed the game itself. When watching this game, I had to specifically stop myself from just screen recording like every single play because there were so many examples of really bad football by the Steelers offense. And some of it might be the weather. Like we, we do have to mention that. But, you know, this play is a good example where it's the first play of the game. It's a, you know, cover two zone, but with a five man rush. So, okay, interesting stuff there. But you have a receiver who could get into a gap in coverage. You know, again, people like to criticize Matt Canada. Well, let's see how this play works. So, Pickett's going to take the snap. You see that, hey, this time it worked out. Matt Canada's call worked. You get a receiver wide open. I mean, these are the things you dream of right away, you know, right out of the, the gate. We're getting an opportunity to get a chunk play, which, again, is part of the Steelers' issue, right? You got to get those chunk plays if you're going to have a consistent offense. And this pass was... I don't know if I would call that drop, but I guess I would. I mean, that it's a it's a play you have to make. Uh, it is. It's a play you have to make. Granted, the throw was a bit high as well from Pickett, so that obviously didn't help things. But still, uh, that's a play that has to be made. Let's just phrase it that way by the Pittsburgh Steelers. You get a guy that open. You get Matt Canada's, you know, one of his three good play calls a game right out of right out of the gate. You have to find a way to make that happen. That's Allen Robinson, the veteran who just you know wasn't able to make that play on that one, which is weird because you would think he could still catch but not on that one I guess and like this play again is another one of those like is this the weather thing and I think yes I think the weather definitely was a factor where what's going to happen on this one so it's zone coverage and you see the route that they're going to look towards it's sort of this route going towards the sideline it's Deontay Johnson who's going to be running the route on this play okay well let's see what happens right when this play begins Pickett takes the snap looks over and as he's into throwing motion Johnson hits the deck Johnson slips on the grass causing him to be on the ground which is obviously not ideal here Kenny Pickett's throw goes over to the outside and that one was dropped as well so hey I guess the the wet football works in both ways makes it harder for the defensive backs to catch it too which is good news for the Steelers but uh, as a whole I mean again weird situations going on and this is kind of you know I talked about this on the podcast a bit it's one of those just weird things about football there's no other sport like it where depending on the weather it can be a completely different game there's no denying the weather affected this football game but going over here is blaming the weather just the reality of that's why things went so poorly or is it a bit of an excuse it's hard to say because like you know George Pickens it's crazy to me that he only had one catch and we'll talk about that catch in a second but it's crazy to me he only had one catch because it felt like he was open all game this play it's third down and two it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside this is kind of the thing where okay put the ball in his direction because he's George Pickens one-on-one -on -one. he's kind of earned the respect at this point of being the guy who in a one-on-one -on -one spot on the outside you just throw it up to Watch how Pickett's going to take the snap, and he does the right thing. I mean, he looks over, uh, if, if anything, maybe looked over a little bit too early, but the safety was shading on the other side of the field, so you're fine there. Uh, Pickens gets wide open on this play, and, you know, that is to some degree the benefit of playing in the rain, of you know where you're going. It's a little bit harder to cut and harder to move when it's slippery, so that can be a benefit towards the offense as well. You get Pickens wide open, though. I mean, these, again, these are the plays you have to make. As you see, this throw was underthrown. Defensive back did a good job of coming back and being able to knock that ball away. But you got to give your receiver a chance there. And, and really, you got to give your receiver more than a chance. You want to be completing those plays. You want to be driving the ball down the football field. And not being able to hit on those really just makes things difficult. Like, we'll talk about the positive. This is now Mitchell Trubisky in at quarterback. The George Pickens play. I mean, again... George Pickens looks like a real guy, and that is one nice thing that's happened out of the Steelers offense this year is I thought Pickens looked like a good number two last year as a rookie. To me, he's now, he's shown he's a number one, and like this play is a perfect example where it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside once again, and for Trubisky, he's going to say, again, kind of like what uh, Pickett said, yeah, just get the ball in his area, hope it works out. 
as you see, Trubisky takes the snap. He flips it over towards Pickens. And I'm pausing it right here because look at this window. I mean, this is an easy first down. The first down is just almost a given at this point. This is not a tough play from Trubisky at all. And that's what you want out of your receivers, right? Make it easy on the quarterbacks. And that's what Pickens is doing on this play. As you see, Pickens makes the catch. He hurdles over a defender and gets into the end zone for a touchdown. Listen, I'm not going to say he's going to hurdle over players every time he gets the football, but the main point is that you get the football in his hands, good things are going to happen, and this is the one thing you look at uh, in a tough game and say, well, at least we still have George Pickens. At least he's still a guy who can really make things happen, and again, there's a ton of value in that. Unfortunately, there were more of these plays than the other way around. This is going to be, again, Trubisky is in at quarterback here. Uh, it is a zone coverage play. You see the route concept on the screen and how it can work. Getting underneath the uh, safety on this one, it's Deontay Johnson, once again, who's going to be running this route. Or not safety, excuse me, uh, corner, getting in, underneath the corner on this play. But anyways, watch what happens. Trubisky is going to take the snap on this play. He runs a play action, and then he throws the ball down the field, and again, Already, this is a bit of a tough spot. It is. You're relying on a really good throw and a really good catch. And I think that that's maybe where some of the criticism for Matt Canada, who, despite the fact that I kind of brought up earlier in, in this video, haven't uh, talked a ton about recently. But I think this is where some of the frustration with Steelers fans comes in, where I think if you're a Steelers fan, you know you don't have the most talent. You get it. It's Trubisky throwing to some, you know, Deontay Johnson, I think, is a good player. But, like, it's not like Deontay Johnson is, you know, DeAndre Hopkins in his prime, right? Like, that's not who he is. He's a good player, though. I'm not bashing him. Uh, but, you know, it's Trubisky throwing the football. They're, the offensive line definitely needs has some issues. Like, we get it. The offense is not a superstar-driven offense. It's just not. But I think the frustration for Steelers fans is you're still kind of treating it as though it is. You're treating it as though, hey, we got to have our guys go out and win on the outside. Deontay Johnson going up against a good secondary. Just go win on the outside. Trubisky now make a perfect throw. So Trubisky has to make a good throw. Johnson has to make a good catch. And it's pouring rain. What could go wrong? As you see, Johnson doesn't really get a good uh, read on that. I think he slipped down, uh, which doesn't help. Another dropped pass by a defensive back. Again, this could have been a lot worse by Pittsburgh. It really could have. Wasn't a perfect throw from Trubisky, but it's a tough play. So, like, at the end of the day, you know, I, I do say this and I believe it. You know, uh, talent is the most important thing for a football team. Uh, you know, even the bad head coaches or bad play callers are still pretty good. They're not going to be abysmal with few exceptions. But that being said, you don't want a bad play caller. You want a good play caller because that still adds a ton of value. And for, uh, you know, Matt Canada right here, it's just not going well. And maybe they just need a new look of eyes on all of this. I, I wouldn't hate that as a whole. I think that if you're someone who believes get rid of Matt Canada, the offense is going to just look awesome. Well, I think that's a little silly. I do. But if you're someone who says, let's get rid of Matt Canada and the offense could look competent, I don't think that's out of the question. Again, this was a weird game. I wouldn't make any sweeping judgments on this game itself, but it's been more than one game. And I think that's how Pittsburgh fans feel at this point. So, and I agree. So yeah, those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.